Hello everyone. Welcome to another topic in electronics and I will be discussing crystal oscillator in this video. But before we go directly to the topic, let's review first the more common type of oscillator circuits and that is LC and RC. With these oscillator circuits, it has a major limitation or drawback in its operation. And it lies on the operating frequency that this oscillator produces. The frequency is not strictly constant. And with that kind of drawback in the oscillator, it would mean a major problem when it comes to operations such as broadcasting because uh, the frequency change or the the frequency tolerance should be as small as possible because the the frequency bands of adjacent stations are so close to each other that if we vary our operating frequency just uh, by a little and what if it would interfere or overlap with the other channel's frequency and that would mean interference. So for this limitation, we will identify what's the cause of this. It is first caused by the temperature because inductor, resistor, and capacitor will change its value with respect to the temperature and thus will also change the operating frequency. Another cause of this limitation is the uh, if there is any component in the feedback network that is changed or busted or defective, then the operating frequency will likely change. In order to address this problem with LC and RC, we can rely on crystal oscillators. Now, the main operation or the main characteristics of this type of oscillator is that it has more consistent output frequency because it operates in a piezoelectric via piezoelectric effect. And what is that? It's the ability of the material to generate electric charge in response to a mechanical stress. And for electrical circuitry, what we'll be introducing to the crystal is in terms of electrical stress. And when we introduce uh, electricity, in the crystal itself, then it will produce or it will generate electric charge that corresponds to its natural frequency. The frequency of a crystal oscillator changes by less than 0.1% due to temperature and other changes. So basically, we can consider that the temperature does not greatly affect the output frequency of a crystal oscillator. These are the common crystals that has piezoelectric effect. The Rochelle salt, the first one. This is the quartz, and this is the tourmaline. But among the three, the commonly used crystal as an oscillator in electronic and communications equipment circuitry, it is the quartz. So this is the quartz. Crystal. Quartz crystals are generally used in crystal oscillators because of its uh, great mechanical strength and simplicity of manufacture. The natural shape of the quartz crystal is hexagonal shape indicated in the figure and it has three axes. The Z axis is what we call the optical axis. The X axis is the electrical axis, while the Y axis is the mechanical axis. The frequency 
of the crystal will depend on the way the way the, the crystal is cut and it is equivalent to k over t where k is the constant that depends upon the cut and t is the thickness of the crystal. It is clear that frequency is inversely proportional to crystal's thickness. The thinner the crystal, the greater is its natural frequency and uh, vice versa. However, take note that extremely thin crystal may break because of vibrations. And since we need the crystal to vibrate to produce a certain frequency, we have a limitation in that in that sense. In practice, the frequency between 25 kilohertz to 5 megahertz have been obtained with crystal. So that is the limit of the frequency that we can that we can attain through crystal oscillators. How do crystal or how do quartz crystal operate? We can incorporate the crystal oscillator in the electrical circuit by putting it in between two metal plates. Now this component acts like a capacitor and the crystal itself is the dielectric of the capacitor. If we introduce an AC or voltage across the plates, the crystal will start vibrating at the frequency of the applied voltage. Now if the frequency of the voltage that we applied is equivalent to the natural frequency of the crystal, then resonance will take place. And the crystal vibration will reach its maximum value. Crystal oscillator can be represented by the components R, L, and C. And it is in the matter that when the crystal is not vibrating, then it serves or it acts like a capacitor, it has a CM. And this CM is the mounting capacitance when it doesn't vibrate. When we apply AC voltage through the metal plates and the crystal oscillator will start to vibrate, we can approximate its operation through a series RLC branch connected in parallel with the mounting capacitance. One way to measure the the quality of the crystal oscillator is through the Q factor. Q factor stands for quality factor and it is equivalent to 1 over R multiplied with the square root of L over C. The amount of Q that a crystal oscillator has will indicate how, how good the crystal oscillator is. The Q factor determines crystal's frequency stability. So in general, the Q factor of the crystal has a range from 20,000 to more than 100,000. For the frequency response of the crystal oscillator, let's start with the low frequency range. At low frequency, the impedance, or the reactance, I mean, of the capacitor in the series RLC branch and the mounting capacitance will be very high and that and this value will control the impedance of the crystal itself. Now if we try to gradually increase the frequency there will be a frequency where L and C will be at resonance. And that frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. This is the, uh, at this frequency where the reactance of the inductor and the reactance of the capacitor will be equal. 
and that is what we call the series resonant frequency. Now, if we try to increase the frequency a little bit higher, the reactance of the inductor will be very high or will increase also. And uh, the, C the series RLC branch will become inductive in nature. The crystal now acts as a parallel resonant circuit. For this condition, the crystal offers a very high impedance. The frequency at which the vibrating crystal behaves as a parallel resonant circuit is called the parallel resonant frequency denoted by Fp, which is equivalent to 1 over 2 pi square root of L times C sub T, where C sub T is the ratio of the product of C and the mounting capacitance to the sum of the C and the mounting capacitance. At frequencies greater than the parallel resonant frequency, the value of the mounting uh, the reactance of the mounting capacitance drops and that is when the crystal will act as a short circuit. Therefore, we can use a crystal in place of a series LC circuit or in place of parallel LC circuit. If we use it in place of series LC circuit, the oscillator will operate at Fs. However, if we use the crystal in place of parallel LC circuit, the oscillator will operate at the frequency Fp. Now, in order to use the crystal properly, it must be connected in a circuit so that its low impedance in a series resonant operating mode or high impedance in a parallel resonant operating mode is selected. Now, let's use the crystal oscillator in a transistor feedback amplifier. As you can see in the diagram, this is a Colpitt's oscillator modified by replacing the inductor parallel to the C1 and C2 with a crystal oscillator Y. The crystal will now act as a parallel tuned circuit. As you can see in the circuit that instead of resonance caused by L and C1 plus C2, we have now the parallel resonance of the crystal. So at parallel resonance, the impedance of the crystal is maximum. This means that there is a maximum voltage drop across C1 or the voltage output. This in turn will allow the maximum energy transfer through the feedback network of Fp. Note that the system the circuit is a positive feedback. The 180 degree out of phase is introduced by the, the transistor itself, while the other 180 degrees is introduced by the voltage divider network of C1 and C2. So this oscillator will only oscillate at the frequency Fp. Even the uh, smallest deviation from Fp will cause the oscillator to act as an effective short. Consequently, we have an extremely stable oscillator. This circuit has some advantages and disadvantages also. First advantage is that it has a high order of frequency stability, rightfully so because we used a crystal oscillator instead of the common L. A C tank circuit. The second one is the quality factor of the crystal is very high and that means that the frequency is very stable. The Q factor of the crystal can is comparably as high as 10,000 compared to 100 in a common LC tank. But this circuit has some disadvantages and first it is fragile and consequently can only be used in low power circuits that is one of the drawbacks of a crystal oscillator 
as we have discussed earlier, if we apply a very large voltage into the metal plates of the crystal oscillator, we could we could break the oscillator through the through too much vibration, and that is the reason why we are limited to low power uh, circuit operations. The second disadvantage is that the frequency of oscillation cannot be changed appreciably. Since the frequency output of a crystal oscillator is a very stable, then it means that we, can, we cannot just simply change the value of the frequency of oscillation. Unlike the LC circuit, then we'll just have to use variable capacitance components for uh, so that we can change the operating frequency as easily as turning the knob on the variable capacitance or changing the number of turns in an inductor. Let's have some example. The AC equivalent circuit of a crystal has these values. The L is 1 Henry. C is... 0 0.01 picofarad, R is 1000 ohms, and the mounting capacitance is 20 picofarad. Let's calculate Fp and Fs of the crystal. So we'll just have to recall the formula for Fp and Fs. And let's start with Fs. This is equivalent to 1 over... 2 pi square root of LC. L is given, and so is C. Substituting the values, we will get our Fs of 1589 kHz. Now for the Fp, it is 1 over 2 pi square root of L times C sub T. C sub T is C times Cm over C plus Cm. Let's get the value of CT by substituting the values of C and CM. So our CT is 9.99 times 10 to the negative 15 farads. Substituting that to the equation of FP. And solving, we can the value of FP is equivalent to 1590 kilohertz.